I'm going to notice what I see now uh, standing at stage left, and that is our meteorologist, Pat Pagano. Good morning, Pat. And good morning, good morning, good morning. Another beautiful day in the neighborhood. Uh, sunshine and a high today of 80. Tonight, not as cool because of clouds, 55 to 60. By the way, Marshall, did you see the strawberry moon this morning? No. <laughs> oh, well, it's not too high up. This is the lowest um, full moon of the year. And it's almost uh, just above the horizon. So I don't know if you're going to see it tonight because uh, of the clouds. But tomorrow, there's a chance of a shower or two, mainly in the morning. Then in the afternoon, it'll turn partly cloudy in the mid-70s. Saturday and Sunday will be hazy, humid days, mid to upper 80s. Either or both days could have a late day thunderstorm. And that kind of pattern continues at least through the middle part of next week. And I will say it again, I'm still not liking the pattern for late next week and the long holiday July 4th weekend. Well, it looks like we might have uh, inclement weather. That's the way it looks. I don't like it. I don't like the upper air. I don't like how it's setting up, but we shall see. Usually what happens in a case like this, you need to get a good cold front to come down from Canada not so much from the Midwest, come down from Canada and suppress all of the unsettled uh, moisture to our south. Sometimes it does happen. Sometimes um, it doesn't. And sometimes when it does happen, it happens a little too late. Like, for instance, uh, maybe by Monday, the actual fifth, which a lot of people have off. You know, and everybody will say, huh, what good is that? You know, that's the day we have to come home. Well, I don't know what to tell you, but no promises for late next week and the weekend. Well, just wait and watch and see what happens. Well, you just have to deal with it. Come on. That's it. Just yeah, deal well, with it. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of people I know that just look so forward, you know, to fireworks and stuff like that. And, and if it rains and they can't do the fireworks, then they're, they're all sort of depressed. Me, I could care less. I could go to sleep during the fireworks. I mean, I like fireworks. I like to see fireworks. But on the 4th of July, it's just kind of cool what the history of the 4th of July means. And if you're around friends and you don't get to go to see fireworks, it's one of the true holidays. It's like Christmas. Even though on Christmas you're celebrating the death of Christ, you're celebrating Christ. It's a, it's a, it's a holiday that brings joy and happiness, Okay. Right. Uh, the 4th of July is that same type of holiday. I mean, we have the, the real important holidays where you have to remember like Veterans Day uh, and uh, Memorial Day. Those are different types of holidays. But July 4th is truly a, a holiday that you can rejoice. And if you don't get to see fireworks on the 4th of July, they'll be rescheduled. You still get to rejoice the fact that you're in America, the greatest country in the world. Period. Yeah. I mean, Period. come on, come on. I mean, you know, I, it's, it's just it's just what it is. I mean, we, we celebrate a lot of holidays, you know, and a lot of foolish holidays. I mean, Parents' Day, Grandparents' Day, uh, Best Dog Day. I mean, those are all fun holidays. But of the serious holidays, this is, this is one of the few that you can, even though it's a serious holiday, you can get out there and rejoice of our independence. Well, so. I totally agree with you. Totally agree. I'm, I'm, More people yeah, have to think of that than any anything else. I'm, I'm finished with my sermon. That's my sermon from the mount this morning. From the there double you go. Room. That's it. There you go. Yeah. Now I got up this morning. Now I've lost another two pounds. I'm I'm down eighty two pounds. Excellent. Now. But I got up this morning and uh, and as I swung my legs off the bed, I looked at the lower portion of my legs from the knees down, and. I said, what the hell is that? And I looked at my left leg and I looked at my right leg. And I'm, st I'm starting to lose so much weight that my uh, my legs look like crepe paper. <laughs> you know, the, 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 there's uh, little, lots and lots of little folds in the skin <laughs> on the leg. Yeah. So that means, you know what that means. I mean, you have I'm to gonna, exercise. I'm going to have to start exercising. But, yeah. but uh, I looked at it and I, I, for a second I got a little shocked. But then I said, oh. But then I thought, well, I just saw this commercial on TV uh, with these beautiful 65, 70-year-old actresses that are using this lotion to stop the, what they call uh, the crepe paper effect. 
Okay. Now, uh, to put off possibly having to exercise, maybe I'll try. You maybe, try that. Maybe I'll I try know, that on my legs. <laughs> I know if uh, if my former doctor, who, as you know, still still is in the house of detention, uh, waiting for a sentence three years later. Um, if he were here right now, he would say to you, Marshall, don't buy any of that junk. Just moisturize. Moisturize, moisturize, moisturize. moisturize. Yep. All right. That's well, what he would tell you to do. So just do that. And, of course, try to exercise more. Well, it's it's hard, though, because uh, I'm eating so so much Let less. Me. I'm oh, eating okay. so much less. I mean, I'm, I'm only eating uh, anywhere between 1,200 and 1,600 calories a day. That's great. But it also, you know, it, it takes your energy away. You don't have as much energy. Right. But what I'm hoping for is when I get the knee fixed, you know, eventually, and I've lost this weight, then I can get out there and start walking again, and then things will all readjust back when, when I can start, you know, to do that. And yeah, can, that's, a, that's well, that's a very, very good plan. You know, and, uh, I think it's a very good plan. And I admire you. I think you're doing a great job. So now, what is it, like 82 pounds now, right? 82. 82 pounds, That is yeah. phenomenal. <laughs> that is really, really and good. I mean, it, that alone has to encourage you to keep well, going. It does, but it's funny because um, it started out as a diet, but it's no longer a diet because now it's been going on for 15 months. It's going to go your way of life, yeah. That, that my, and I, that's right. And, and if I... Sit down, and let's say I make a salad, and I make the salad too big. There's times I can't finish what I eat, well, what I put out to eat. So it has become a way of life. So it'll all straighten itself out one way or the other. Yeah, well, you know, as you continue to do this, the stomach shrinks. Uh, so it gets to a point where, uh, you know, it's telling you I'm full, uh, which is really, you know, the way to do it. And then, you know, you could cheat a little here and there, but... Uh, for the most part, if you stick to your plan, I think you're doing really well. So that's great. And, um, you know, look at it this way. By the end of this year, the way you're going, I bet you I bet you, you'll lose at least, at least another 10 pounds. Well, we'll see. Well, yeah, we'll see what happens. Is it too shit what, what's happening with Britney Spears? Uh, you know. I just can't believe that. Now, I know why they did it at the beginning, and she went along with it in the beginning, but my God, that was 10 years ago when she was right. a kid and she was being taken advantage of. She's a woman now. Yeah. She hasn't done anything crazy or nutty in the past eight, nine years. Let her take her life back. She doesn't need her old father being the conservator of, of all everything she does. I totally agree with that. Uh, I mean, I... She's still, I guess she's still in the spotlight, but I didn't think she was as much in the spotlight now as she used to be. She's not, and but she's not, and she's a, she's a woman now. She's not a kid. Right. You know, let her take well, over, I, let her be she, responsible for her own life. Yeah, it's, it's really crazy, some of the stories you hear. Well, you know, really, really crazy. You know why they did it at the beginning? To protect her, because she was young and she had millions of dollars and they didn't want, mm -hmm. but that's, that's long ago. She's no longer that woman. She's a different woman. I don't right. know. I guess it, it, I don't talk much about the news like that because it, it, it's not super. But when you see somebody's life being controlled, uh, and and you, it's got to stop with her. I hope I hope she wins her court case. I really do. All right. Well, well, well yeah. When we find out about that, oh, probably in the next couple of days. Uh, it's, oh, it's, you know, well, a, you a, a, ju okay. a judge will be the one that decides. Okay. And judge will be the one that decides. So anyway, see we're up 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 in Miami Dade uh, uh um an eighty unit uh, condominium. Uh one side of it collapsed. Um, uh, do I ask why? They don't know yet, it just happened. I asked my friend Len when he was here because he lives in, as you know, Palm Gardens. Yeah. I said, Lenny, um I just have a question to ask you about the houses down there. Um, how, how well are they supported to withstand hurricanes? He goes, well, Pat, he said, my house is built with solid concrete. So the walls are filled with concrete. He goes, but the roofs are not. He said, none of the roofs down there are. He said, what? He said, so a one or a two, you may be fine. He said, but if a three comes or better, 
And he said, that's big trouble. I said, so there is no one there that is guaranteed uh, for their house to stay if a, ca a Category 3 hurricane hit. He goes, absolutely not. Well, no, because I knew somebody that, uh, that owned a condominium, I mean, right off the ocean, right off the ocean mm -hmm. uh, in Florida. And the way it was designed, it was designed so uh, it faced directly to the ocean and it could withstand Category 1 or 2. But if a Category 3 or, or higher came, what would happen is whatever hit the front of the condominium would flush through the front wall and the back wall would give way so the building would still stand. But uh, they'd have to put on a new back wall, a new front wall, and then rebuild the interior. But the building would still stand because down there, if a building gets completely demolished by a hurricane, right. you can't rebuild it there. You can't rebuild. He was saying that... Um, when you live in Florida, six months of the year, you live in fear. He said, and that is uh, the summer because of hurricanes. Yeah. Oh, well, we don't live in fear with our forecast, though. We sure don't. So go out there and be fearless and get, get the sun and take a nice little walk today, Marshall. All right, Pat. I'll speak to you tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye. Pat Pagano this morning in the Weather Center with a check at our tri-state forecast.